This is the biggest problem with real ear measurement. Did you know that it has been nearly six years since I published my first video about real ear measurement? Back when I made that video, I had less than a thousand YouTube subscribers and none of the videos that I had produced at that point had more than 500 views. If you decide to go back and watch that video, take it easy on me. I wasn't that good at making videos at that point, but all the information inside of that video was definitely accurate and it's still relevant. The reason I decided to make that video back then is because I was incredibly discouraged by the lack of hearing care providers who were performing this verification of hearing aid programming for their patients. And back in 2017, these percentages were anywhere between 10 and 30% of providers who were doing so. Basically meaning that anywhere between 70 and 90% of individuals with hearing loss were not wearing hearing aids that were properly programmed. But even more disappointing to me was that individuals with hearing loss had no idea that this particular procedure should be performed on their hearing aids to achieve an optimal outcome. Of course, even at this point in my video making career, I had realized that if I titled the video, what is real ear measurement, that nobody would watch it. So instead, I titled the video, the most important hearing aid video that you will ever watch. And this clearly led to more people watching this video than would have ever seen it otherwise. So how many people actually decided to watch this video? Well, after about six years, this video has nearly 500,000 views. But the best part about that video is that individuals with hearing loss started to demand that their hearing care provider performed real ear measurement. And if they didn't, they decided to go somewhere else that did. And as proud as I am about that particular video, there are still four major problems when it comes to real ear measurement that I didn't consider back when I made that video. The first major problem being that many hearing aid clinics are still coming up with excuses for not performing real ear measurement. Now I knew that after posting one video on YouTube about real ear measurement, that not every clinician in the world was gonna get on board with performing these measurements, but I'm still disappointed with how many clinics are not doing them. And they say this despite the fact that every research study ever done looking at real ear measurement shows that real ear measurement significantly improves patient outcomes with hearing aids. And it doesn't even matter if real ear measurement is done on premium level hearing aids, basic level hearing aids, digital hearing aids, or even old analog hearing aids. When it comes to hearing aid performance, real ear measurement always wins. The second major problem that I've discovered when it comes to real ear measurement is that some providers are pretending to do these measures. Now I know that this sounds ridiculous, but some hearing care providers are actually performing different measurements like feedback manager checks and in situ audiometry in saying that that is real ear measurement when clearly it is not. And they say this to make you think that they actually did the measures. This is really unfortunate because it's one thing to just not do real ear measurement and it's another thing to not do them but say you did. I've also heard of numerous hearing care providers performing real ear measurements and making the proper adjustments only to revert their patients back to first fit settings before the patient even had a chance to test out the verified measures. I hate to say it, but the only way that you can ensure that you've had real ear measurement done on your hearing aids is if you have a basic understanding of what real ear measurement is, which this video can help you out. And yes, I will link that in the description as well. Fortunately, I do not believe that this is happening very often, but based on feedback that I've obtained over the past six years, I can tell you that it is definitely definitely happening. Hey guys, hopefully you're learning something from this video so far. If you are, make sure that you hit that like button because it really helps out my channel. And if you have not yet hit that subscribe button with notification bell, go ahead and do that as well so you get notified every single time I publish a new video. That being said, I greatly appreciate it. Now let's go ahead and get back to this video. The third problem with real ear measurement that I did not realize was going to be a problem six years ago is that you actually have to perform it well. Remember, real ear measurement is just a form of verification so you can see how the hearing aid is programmed inside of your ears. But technically speaking, you could run real ear measurements and leave the hearing aids at manufacturer first fit settings, not make a single adjustment and say that you ran them. Or you could run the measurements, not make the appropriate adjustments, which would ultimately lead to poor sound quality and poor overall hearing performance. To receive the full amount of benefit from real ear measurement, you have to make sure that you are meeting your validated prescriptive targets for average, loud, and soft level speech. You may also find out that the hearing aids that were selected are not capable of meeting your prescription and that you may need to switch into a different receiver or different custom ear molds, or you may even have to switch hearing aids entirely. But again, just running real ear measurement makes no difference. You have to run them correctly and make the 
proper adjustments, otherwise you're just wasting your time. And the fourth problem with real ear measurement is thinking that they will solve all your problems. It drives me crazy when I hear other providers tell me that they follow comprehensive best practices because they run real ear measurement. In reality, real ear measurement is only one of many best practices that must be followed if you want to achieve your maximum performance with hearing aids. If real ear measurement is all you do, then I'm sorry because you're missing a ton of other things that could lead to a better treatment outcome with hearing aids. Not to mention, real ear measurement is just a starting point. It takes the human brain between 30 and 45 days to maximally adjust to hearing treatment, but a lot of adjustments could potentially be made off of your prescription based on your feedback. Remember, hearing loss prescriptions for the amount of amplification that you need are based on averages. You may need slightly more amplification than the average or less amplification than the average, but you should not be assuming any of this until after you've had a chance to adapt. Now, I did not address any of these potential problems inside of my initial video about real ear measurement, but to be honest with you, I didn't think I'd have to. But now that you know about them, hopefully you can continue to advocate for yourself to ensure that real ear measurement is being done and it's being done correctly. Of course, if you want an easy way to find a hearing care professional who not only performs real ear measurement, but also follows comprehensive best practices, then you need to check out my website, hearingup.com, and find a Hearing Up Network member near you. Hearing Up members have been vetted and are committed to providing you with the best audiologic care possible. This way you can be confident that you will hear your absolute best with your hearing aids. While real ear measurement is only one piece to a puzzle when it comes to optimizing your hearing aid performance, it is a very large piece and it's considered the gold standard when it comes to verification of hearing aid programming. And as long as you're aware of all of the problems with real ear measurement, at least you can be prepared for whenever those problems pop up.